rise for the invocation. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face shine upon us, that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase, God. Our God shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Let us now confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our readings. Tonight's Old Testament reading comes from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 through 10. The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on, your, on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that, as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord, your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you can dig copper. You shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Our epistle reading comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 20. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, 
If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once, again, once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Aphrodite the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our next hymn. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he, had been, he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our common faith in the triune God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Please be seated. Uh, we are not going to have a children's message, but if the children want to come up during our hymn to grab a piece of candy, you're welcome to do so. We'll continue with our next hymn. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So tonight as we gather together this Thanksgiving Eve, we're probably all likely looking forward to tomorrow. Our Thanksgiving get-together, if you happen to be doing that with people. And one of the things that I was thinking of as I was looking at the readings and thinking about this is uh, back in August, in our August newsletter, I had wrote a letter of thanks to you guys, to our congregation. And uh, from what I understand, a uh, percentage of people that actually see the newsletter isn't that high, so I thought maybe I'd start by actually reading this letter um, as it actually kind of ties into Paul's reading tonight. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to read this letter and um, then we'll go from there. So it says, to my St. John's family, in Paul's letter to the churches, the Apostle Paul is often giving thanks. In one letter, however, Paul thanks the Philippians specifically for their support. Just as Paul appreciated the support of the Philippians, I too express my thanks to my church family here at St. John's. I thank you for the support, the support you've shown me over the past five years through the preparing for and going through schooling with Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, Missouri. If it were not for the virtual option of schooling and the personal and financial support of the congregation, it would not have been possible. But of course, with God, all things are possible. And God has worked through all of you to carry out his will. It is with the support of my wife, Amy, and our children, Ben, Abby, and Grace, and Pastor Carl and Jessica, their family, and the church family here at St. John's, that I was able to answer God's calling to pursue the SMP Specific Ministries Pastor Program. I've appreciated all the kind and uplifting words that have been shared with me over that time, along with the load of everyday tasks that were picked up by others as my time was spent studying and doing homework. Amy kept the ship afloat around home as her and the kids picked up many of the things that I would, would have otherwise been doing, such as caring for the yard and the house, and Pastor Carl's mentorship was critical to my succeeding and is greatly appreciated. With that said, I'm very excited and look forward to how God plans to work in me and through me here at St. John's in the years to come. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. If it is God's will for you, he will work through you to accomplish it, even when it may seem that is not possible. Trust in the Lord, for he is good. Thank you again, and God's blessings to you all, your brother in Christ, Pastor Craig. So, um, Just wanted to read that. To show my appreciation for you guys. And how I care about you guys, like you care for me. So, I didn't think that was going to happen, but okay. So, we'll move on to the readings now. <laughs> but, but truly, thank you. And I thought Thanksgiving and with our readings today, was a good time to share that, so. Um, all right, okay, now on to, the, on to the other stuff. So, as we move forward now, tomorrow's a day that, uh, for most of us, it's pretty easy to give thanks. We like to get together, we like to celebrate a meal together, we might have turkey or ham or both, 
um, gravy, mashed potatoes, corn. Um, some people might have salad if you're into that kind of thing. I don't know. Um, but maybe pumpkin pie and dessert, that's kind of more my speed. Um, although I do have a salad once in a while. But uh, we like to get together. We like to celebrate. We might watch some football. We might play some cards, might play some board games, whatever it may be. Um, but we like to do those things. We like to, to get together. And, you know, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, you know, a great meal with family and friends, having some football on, maybe playing some sheephead. How much better can it get than that? Well, maybe you could mix in a couple hours of hunting, I guess. But other than that, I don't know how much better it could get, really. But for some people, that might not be the case. And for the people in our readings today, um, they're certainly not in a situation where they're kicking back and eating themselves into a food coma while relaxing and, and you know, just have their feet up, maybe taking things for granted that we might take for granted. They're not watching fo football games, they're not playing kuya, they're not playing sheephead. Um, for the Israelites in our, in our Old Testament reading, God's chosen people, they've been, they've been wandering around the desert for 40 years, and after being taken up out of persecution in Egypt during these 40 years of wandering, they've faced trials, um, and God has tested them, and he's humbled them. And they've become completely reliant on God's provision. And I'd venture to say that there's times in our lives where we've become reliant on God's provision too. Times where we've been brought low and, and we have to look to God and say, okay, God, you know. But the scriptures tell us that in all this time that they were wandering and waiting their entrance into the land that God had promised them, their clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell. I don't know about you, but as I get older, if I go for a two-mile walk, I can feel it in my hips and my knees and my feet. And these people are walking around for 40 years and their, their feet did not swell, their clothes did not wear out. The only thing I can think is they must really watch their salt intake or something. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, in this journey, God sustains them as he provides them with manna, bread of heaven. Each morning, there's a new supply for them, a new daily supply. Just as we pray in the Lord's Prayer, give us our daily bread. Supply us, provide for our daily provision. Give us the bread of life, Christ Jesus, to sustain us. As the people travel to the promised land, they head there in anticipation of what they've been promised. A land that has abundance of brooks and water, fountains and springs, wheat and barley, vines, fig trees and pomegranates, olive trees and honey, a land which they will eat bread without scarcity. There's iron and copper is plentiful. And the last line of the text says, and you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. God's people Israel have a reason to be thankful. Through their trials and humility, God leads them to the promised land and ultimately gives them faith, pointing forward to the completion of his promise in Christ Jesus, a promise that will be fully completed at Christ's return. Now, the gospel reading from Luke would be the next if we view the readings in a chronological order, time sense. As we recall from Luke's gospel, Jesus is making his way towards Jerusalem. He's doing so, because Jerusalem is where he needs to go for God's promise to be carried out. Jesus is literally making his way to the cross. And in doing so, Jesus travels through villages, teaching and doing miracles, bringing people to faith in him. And he passes somewhere between Samaria and Galilee. He hears the distant cries of ten lepers, nine that are Jewish and one that's a Samaritan. And now the Jewish people, the, to, to the Jewish people, the Samaritan 
uh, is a foreigner, an outsider. He's despised by them. But due to their unclean, leprous, outcast condition, which they have in common, they tolerate each other. They become outcasts as well. And the ten cried out from a distance. They cried out in a loud voice saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They're looking for any kind of relief that Jesus can give them. The hope that Jesus can provide even the slightest relief. To which Jesus responds, go show yourselves to the priests. And they went and they were cleansed. Now these men were cleansed when they were at a distance away from Jesus. Why do you think that is? Wouldn't it have made more sense for Jesus to do that right in his presence close to them? Well, this was so Jesus would not fully reveal himself to others as some would have prevented him from continuing on to Jerusalem. But he did heal them and of the ten that he had just revealed himself to through healing, it was only the foreigner that praised God and returned to bow at Jesus' feet and give thanks. And this is followed by Jesus' words to the man. Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. And we see this language a lot in Scripture. Your faith has made you well. And while the nine Jewish men did not turn back to give thanks and praise, as they were caught up in the ritual practice of showing themselves to the priests for their cleanliness, Jesus still shows them mercy and he heals them. But it was the foreigner that received the peace of hearing those words. Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Here we see it as clearly Christ doing the work, giving the healing as a gift, and giving them strength, uh, faith and strengthening it, despite the nine's response of ingratitude. Now, lastly, if we look at Paul's letter to the Philippians, we witness that Paul is imprisoned, imprisoned for teaching about Jesus. And he is thanking the Philippians as God works through them in supporting him and lifting him up. Just like all of you supported me and lift me up. And he also gives thanks and praise to Christ Jesus as Paul writes, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Paul knows that it is Christ who gives him the strength to get through. He is proclaiming his trust and God-given faith in Christ to provide, to provide him with all that he needs to accomplish that which is placed before him by God. Again, here we see God's provision. Paul also shares with the Philippians that through prayer and thanksgiving to make their requests known to God and that the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The same request that we make after each sermon. For Paul, he reveals, he, for Paul, he really seems to be in a position where you wouldn't expect him to be giving thanks to God. He's writing from prison. You'd expect him to be crying out in mercy, like the lepers were, like we'd do if we find ourselves in a tough situation. Yet he's giving glory to God. Now for some, especially those who have lost ones recently, or those that are struggling with a spiritual or physical battle, they may struggle to be thankful at this time. Like we would have expected from Paul, and that's understandable. But in those difficult times, we can look to our readings. We can look to God's word. And we can see that even though the Israelites had no way to provide for themselves. It was exactly what, it was exactly that that caused them to have to rely on God. And God provided for them eventually, bringing them into the promised land. Even though Paul was imprisoned and knew that death would eventually come, 
he gave thanks and praise to God. He gave praise for the ups and the downs. Again, knowing that all he would go through was used to strengthen his faith and bring glory to God. And we can do the same. It is often the lows, the struggles, that bring us closer to God. We can be thankful in the lows and the highs as God can work through them all. And in particular, this high, as Jesus Christ was lifted high on the cross. At first sight, at the time, Jesus' death appeared to be a low. It appeared as if Jesus' life was taken. But what really happened is that he gave up his life for ours. You see, Jesus didn't remain dead. He rose in new life on the third day, a new life in which he had conquered sin, death, and the devil. Now, we still have earthly death because of sin existing in the world. That's one that we won't escape until Jesus comes again. But he did rise again, and in doing so, he brought new life, a new life for all believers. Jesus and what he did provides for us the benefit. Through his sacrifice, we have the benefit of forgiveness of sin. We have the benefit of knowing that we'll have an eternal home in peace. I got a lot of scribbles and I'm losing my place here, so I'm just letting you know. <laughs> but more than any big meal, any day with a gathering around a TV, more than any relaxing midday nap, which I don't know about you, but I love my Thanksgiving nap, just putting out a football game, and I really don't care about the football game, I just know I can get a nap in. So, But more than any relaxing midday nap, we can live in the hope and joy of Jesus Welcome, welcoming us into his kingdom one day. We can live thankfully whether things are tough, as hard as that may be, or whether they're going well. You might call it thanks living. It's kind of corny and quirky, but that's kind of the way I am, so I thought I'd use it. So. This Thanksgiving, we can give thanks for the provision that God gives us, and for the good that God does through others, like he did through my family, my church family, like he did through Paul's church family in Philippi, as Paul was sharing the saving message of Christ crucified and risen, even while he was imprisoned and facing death, like Jesus himself did for the Samaritans and the nine others, as he showed them mercy, even though they didn't deserve it. Because of what Christ Jesus has done for us, paying the debt due for our sin, he gave his life in our place, and he rose again. And because of that, we will have new life, and we will rise again on the last day through faith in him. Not everything in life will be pleasant, but God can use all toward good, toward our, toward our eternal salvation. And he can, he can not only, excuse me, he can use it not only to lead us to faith in Christ, but to help us reflect the love of Christ Jesus to others as well. So be thankful for what Christ has done for you, what he's done for me. Be a mirror that reflects the love of Christ to others. So God's Holy Spirit can draw them to hope and faith in Christ as well. God coming in the flesh and suffering on our behalf so that we are able to live thankfully and hope and nothing can steal that, can steal the joy that, that, can, that comes through, the eternal peace that comes through faith in him. Just as, just as Jesus proclaimed to the Samaritan, he also proclaimed to us, rise and go your way, your faith has made you well. Amen.
Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. I believe we continue with our offering. Please rise as we continue with the prayers of the church. And we'll speak our prayers responsively today. When I speak, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. And we're remembering in our prayers today the families of Sigrid Bills, Jermaine Wink, and Doris Takalvi, who all passed away this past weekend. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we raise our voices in thanksgiving for your blessings. Once again, the earth has yielded its increase by your undeserved kindness. Hear us in your Son's name. Be gracious to us and shine your face upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Lord, our God, since we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth, bless those you send to proclaim your word, that we may hear it and live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, watch over the homes of your people, that they would be places of blessing and love. We pray that husbands and wives would cherish each other and honor their vows of faithfulness, and we ask you to bless the children given to their care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, that you have kept us safe from our enemies. Continually defend us against all who threaten violence and war. Bless our governor, our president, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Please guide them to lead in accordance with your will. Make the nations to dwell in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, have compassion on the sick and suffering, especially those who we remember in our hearts at this time. Bring healing to all in need according to your will and deliver them from their afflictions. Give them a patient heart in adversity and grace to sustain them in the day of trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, graciously remember the needs of your children. Sustain the weary with hope. Lead your church to be generous in their support of the poor and the hungry and bring an end to all jealousy and strife. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Holy Lord, bless all who receive the sacrament of the altar this day, that they would eat and drink Christ's body and blood in thankfulness for this feast of forgiveness and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, bless those who mourn with confidence in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Receive our thanks together with the whole church for those who have gone before us in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. These and whatever else you have us ask of you, O God, grant us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your, your only Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we speak the words together our Lord has taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Those communing in the pews, I would ask that you would take out your communion packets at this time. Welcome to the Lord's table. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Those communing in the pews, take and eat the body of Christ and take and drink the very blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Then you may be seated.
if you wouldn't mind clicking ahead, John, I'll do the blessing and then we'll do our closing hymn. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And then we'll do our last verse. There we go. Okay. Let's rise for this, please. Please be seated. Um, so I thank you all for coming tonight. I hope you enjoyed our Thanksgiving Eve service. Um, I apologize for getting a little lost on my notes there. They were a total disaster. I had marks all over the place. So, um, so but it was a busy day, so I was just, it is what it is. But um, So hopefully you enjoyed the service. Uh, I wish you all a blessed Thanksgiving and a blessed week. Uh, a few announcements. Um, Let's see here. Coming up on December 2nd, it's a Friday uh, from 7 to 7 p.m. to midnight. We're having another high school game night. So if you know any high school youth that would like to come and join us for that, 7 p.m. to 12 p.m. Friday, December 2nd. If anybody wants to donate like a $10 gift card, we use those to give away throughout the night to the kids. So you're welcome to do that. Um, Let's see, what else do we have coming up? Uh, I believe there's also a cookie walk that weekend here that goes to support our mission trip. I think that just happens kind of like during, uh, between church services, that kind of thing. So that'd be like December 4th, I think. Um, I'm sure there's other things I'm supposed to announce, but I can't remember. Anybody know anything I'm supposed to know? Okay. Birthdays. All right, I heard birthdays. Anybody have a birthday this week, coming up soon, last week? Anybody not raising their hand that really has one? No. <laughs> All right. So with that, then, I, will, I wish you a blessed Thanksgiving and the rest of your week. I'll be preaching in the back. Thank you.